one and we're live hello everyone thank you so much for tuning in to the all brand show we are so so excited we have an amazing vlogger becky thompson who is from power tools with thread if you haven't followed her yet on social media please do so she's phenomenal um, and also please follow allbrands.com we are a family owned and operated business since 1976 i'm actually part of the family my name is barbara douthat chatelaine and i'm so excited to be with you here today especially oh my gosh and i'm seeing so many familiar faces uh so um oh carol hi from arizona Great to see you. Linda from Wisconsin. Sue, England. Wow. How is it over there? Cindy from Shelton. Hey. And Charlene from South Carolina. It's so wonderful to see everyone. It makes me so happy. We have a few announcements before we bring in Becky Thompson. We have an amazing special on Brother Machines that starts on Monday. And that is the 72 months financing. I'm going to have Callie bring that up. So if you're interested in a 10 needle embroidery machine from Brother, starting on Monday through the 19th, you can have 72 months, 0% financing on that. Um, if you're interested in a, in a, one of the more entry level my design center machines you can get 60 months for that so also at the end of this video we're going to be giving away 100 dollars allbrands.com e-gift card Woo! so how do you register to win you just like comment and share or subscribe to our youtube channel and we'll pick a random winner at the end so good luck there and so becky thompson let's bring up callie the um the slide for Becky. So for those of you who may not know who Becky Thompson is, she is a vlogger on YouTube, Power Tools with Thread. She learned her passion for stitching from her mother, who was an amazing garment seamstress. So she's been around sewing machines throughout her, her whole life. And throughout Becky's 20 year career in the US Air Force and 17 years as a federal civilian, she's learned to become very comfortable with technology and loves to combine that knowledge with her quilting and making custom handcrafted. Oh, oh, her husband Keith makes these amazing custom handcrafted um, seam rippers. And maybe she has one to show us a little later. But uh, she loves to see the revival of the sewing industry as an opportunity to have fun while creating quality projects to enjoy and share with others. So let's share with Becky Thompson today and we'll bring her in. Becky, hi, how are you? Hi, Barbara, oh, I'm doing great, how are you? I'm fantastic. <laughs> let's, say, let's see who else is watching in the comments. I know there's familiar faces for all brands and also for Power Tools with Thread. Paula yeah. from Tampa. I'm seeing, hi, Carol, yeah, I see you. <laughs> I, can't, I can't reply. So, but if I see a question, I'll try to answer it too. So it's such a pleasure to see everybody here and watching and um, just getting to visit with you. Barbara, I can't wait. It's been, we haven't seen each other since Houston of 2019, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because we're going to be seeing each other again very soon, right? Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. So we'll be at the Houston International Quilt Festival. Um, Allbrands.com will be hosting the Brother booth. Um, also the Laura Star booth, the Sew Steady booth, the Durkey booth, Designs and Machine Embroidery and Brewer, and even more Scan and Cut. Um, we're going to have Angela Wolf, Marine Will Coxon, um, Wendy Cho, and guess who else? Becky, Becky Thompson is going to be there. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. I, I can't wait. And for everybody who's listening and you're thinking about going or you're not sure, uh, Houston is on and it is on and strong. And uh, Barbara has been so nice. She's going to create like a meet and greet location so that I can have an opportunity. I know some of you are coming in and you want to 
you know, visit and get pictures and that kind of thing. And so Barbara, thank you. That is going to be just amazing. And it's not just me too. I know everybody wants to say hi to Angela Wolf and Reen and everybody else who's going to be there. So it'll go, going to be a lot of fun. I will be there on the 29th and the 30th of October. So you've got me for two whole days. You'll be sick of me by the time it's over. <laughs> Never, 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 never. Oh my god. Yeah, goodness. that's gonna be a blast. <laughs> hey Kelly, let's bring up Tammy Quicks. Um, she's got the black and gold. Look, yeah. Tammy says, I learned how to do edge to edge quilting by Juju from Becky. Great teacher for sure. And Becky, thank Yay. you for your service to our country, by the way. And oh, you're an amazing pleasure. instructor. And yeah, so let's get into it, right? Sure, let's do that. So uh, back in January, um, well, it was actually last fall, I had a conversation with, uh, with Julie from Designs by Juju. And she and I had connected because I started doing uh, unsolicited tutorials for some of her in the Hoop projects. And the response was just overwhelming. And so she contacted me. And we got to actually be, we've never met in person, but we got to be uh, pretty close and, and almost friends, I would say, for somebody that you've never met. And like, she's in Italy right now. I'm so jealous. <laughs> and um, I told her, I said, you know, there's a gap in the market, I think. A lot of people want to finish their quilts using their embroidery machines. And... Uh, you know, there are some products that are out there on the market, but I think a lot of, of embroiderers have four by four hoops and five by seven hoops, all the way up to the 10 by 16 jumbo hoops that the Brother Luminaire has. And so I said, would you, you know, consider thinking about filling that because it, it there's a need that I think that uh, em home embroiderers are hungry for that because they may not be quilters, but maybe they made something, a project, and they want it quilted, whether it was a tote bag or, you know, something. And so last January, uh, and it's only been six months, she released uh, a ton of designs. So I'm talking about designsbyjuju.com. And there are designs there from whether you have a four by four or all the way up to the 10 by 16. And a really nice thing that they've got is some of the designs, depending on your hoop, whether your hoop is long and vertical like this, or maybe it's long width wise, these designs are, they can either start and stop horizontally or start and stop vertically. So you are, you've got a whole breadth of freedom to be able to quilt however you want on your quilt. And every single design comes with a ton of different sizes. And so you're, you know, each design you'll have little bitty. And if you have a little bitty one of, of let's say the dinosaurs, then your dinosaur is in there, you know, and so you can finish uh, maybe you're wanting to quilt a little bib. Well, that's perfect because that design is going to fit on that. So she asked me to make a, uh, a, a video to explain how to do that. And I did. And that video is uh, out on my channel, uh, Power Tools with Thread on YouTube. And so uh, I thought that I would go ahead and do a little demo today to show you how it's done. I'm going to be using the multi-needle. His name is Spanky, and uh, I'm going to be using him. But you can certainly do these on a single needle as well. And what I have here in front of me is a little baby blanket. A friend of mine just had a grandson, and this blanket is, it's a blanket. It's a quilt. Sorry. It's a baby quilt. <laughs> I didn't say blanket. Uh, and it is uh, 48 by 40. So this is fairly good size. You can do everything from a little bitty project all the way up to a king size quilt if you are willing to put yourself through that type of um, 
you know, wrangling with the quilt and that kind of thing. But yeah, this is this is a lot of fun. And I'm glad you gave me this opportunity to finish this UFO. <laughs> oh, it's our pleasure. It's definitely our pleasure. I got to tell you, um, we had someone chiming in in the comments um, from San Antonio who said it's great to see a star. Um, let's see, who is that? Oh, Bian Blanca Nelson. Hey, she says, nice to see our local quilting star. So you're uh, actually- Thank you. You're not in San Antonio, but you're right outside of San Antonio, correct? Right, right. Yeah, we're about 30 miles uh, southeast on Highway 87. I live in a little bitty town called Lavernia. And um, I lived in San Antonio almost my whole life, except for the part of my Air Force career that I was somewhere else in the world. But I'm from San Antonio, been raised in San Antonio. Go Rohawks, Randolph Rohawks. <laughs> well, we're so yeah. lucky to have you as a customer in our San Antonio location where you purchased both of your um, amazing machines with my design center and camera and your luminaire behind you that has the projection. So thank you so much for yes. being a yes. great That's customer great. and for advocating to us as a crafting community um, to give us inspiration. So thank well, you. Well, you know, Barbara, if it wasn't fit for all brands, I wouldn't be where I am because you give me such a great platform. Um, yeah, not only, you know, in YouTube live with your audience, but then also at the Houston show when you wanted me to do that back in 2019, I was like, what really, you know, and it's, it's just been so much fun and I just really enjoy it. So yeah. anyway, um, okay. So do you want to go and get to it or? Yeah, sure. Let's, let's do it. Oh, just before you do, Deidre says Becky is awesome. And Thank Kim you, says, <laughs> I learn so much every time I watch Becky. So thanks guys for the support. Deidre, your return envelope went into the mail today. <laughs> <laughs> she and I have been emailing a little bit. So, okay. So this uh, baby quilt is uh, one of the projects that I got from Creative Notions Quilt Shop. They are a quilt shop out of Utah and they do the monthly subscription and I uh, help promote that for them. And everybody who gets it just absolutely loves it. And it's such a neat thing. But the, the one of them that came several months ago was this was this baby quilt and I put it together, but I didn't get it quilted. And these designs by Juju uh, designs are really good too. If you can see, I've got a long arm back here, right? Well, what if you're just doing placemats, okay? Or a table runner and it's not really something that you would wanna put. Oh yes, Carol, I we will talk about key seam rippers in a little bit. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, you you may not want to actually put this out to a long arm or you don't you don't want to do that and you say, you know what, I think I can do this in my embroidery machine. So there are some basic ideas and, and things to do this if if you're on here and you have not seen this uh, technique before. You will always have your backing. This is the quilt sandwich. I have backing, I have batting in here. This is a Hobbs 8020 and then the quilt top itself. And I have trimmed the batting to be the same size as the quilt top. The backing is a little bit larger, so it gives you some room to do some hooping. And I have paper tape here. OESD makes a wash away tape, which is great. And uh, Barbara, I know you have this at allbrands.com and you sell it in your stores. Yes, ma'am. We actually have a link in the description of this video that takes okay. you to a shopping page that has that on it. Okay, great. So we've you've, you've got wash away tape, which is handy or we have the regular tear away tape and either one works fine. They both stick great and they don't leave a residue on your project. Um, anything from OESD is just fabulous. So I just take the tape and I'm gonna put it along the edge of the quilt top right within a quarter of an inch. And what that does, if you have a single needle machine this is very important because as the needle passes around over the edge of the quilt, it will not get caught and hung up underneath it. And that's really important because nothing is worse 
than stitching your project into the W foot on a brother single needle machine, right? So I'm just putting this, this is my last piece right here through the magic of television. I did the other three sides already. And it's that simple. And so now, oh, I apologize. I just bought my camera. So now this is actually ready to go in the hoop. And you don't have to do any stabilizer at all. This is the stabilizer, the backing of this quilt. So uh, someone had asked me in a comment, actually on the second video I did for Designs by Juju, that was talking about the uh, doing it on larger quilts. And um, she asked, she said, what kind of bobbin thread do you use? I use a standard uh, regular thread as a bobbin thread. You can either use embroidery thread or, um, or like this is a poly. This thread right here is a poly that I have, it's white. And I'm going to be using, um, I've got isocord on the top. So whatever your machine wants to use for an embroidery thread, um, these designs are great because they're not dense. And as a matter of fact, uh, where's my So I was doing some bubbles on this, just real simple little bubbles. And I did a printout and this is what it looks like right here. And you can see how open this is. So the idea, and you can see right here, let's, let me get a better one here. Like this one right here, here's where the design starts and here's where it ends, okay? And you can print these out. You want to use, and you can use a regular sheet of paper. This is done on Designs and Machine Embroideries print and stick target paper. And this is also down in the uh, description box because Barbara told me that you guys have this. So this is very handy because you can put it on your project and get it aligned just the way you want and then peel it off and stitch. And it's that simple to do. So um, let's see here. So I was, let's see, I've got my notes. I don't want to forget to tell you guys anything, you know. So um, let's see. If you are going to be doing a very large design, so for instance, let me back up just a little bit. So this design right here, it doesn't matter if this prints out this way or it stitches out that way, or it stitches, it really doesn't matter because it's so, there is no direction on this thing. If you have a directional design, and let's say you have a large project and you, you would run out of room as you went through the hoop and you kept. Hey everybody. Okay, so I see some questions in the comments that we're gonna get to with Becky as soon as she um, <laughs> unfreezes. So the first question is going to be from Myrna. Hey, Becky, can you hear me? We got a question. Um, it cut out the last part of what you said. So let's bring up I, I the had, first question. I had to run to the store, sorry. <laughs> oh, God. did you pick up that thing that I needed you to pick up? I'm joking. <laughs> All right. So let's bring up the first question, Callie. Um, Brenda asked, did you yes. use spray adhesive to hold it together? Brenda, that's a great question. Yes, absolutely. You want to spray baste your quilt sandwich before you start. Get it all real smooth and then use the tape to tape your sides down. That's going to hold everything in place. Do not use pins. I don't recommend using pins at all because if you accidentally leave one in there, especially like this has a busy print, you're going to hurt your machine. So spray base, definitely. Yeah. We have um, Sullivan spray base on our website. Um, we have a few different quilt basting sprays. So check that out on allbrands.com. Did we have any more questions? One more. One more? Claudia, do you use auto thread like Orofill? Maybe bobbin? They should be cotton thread. Cotton. Uh, oh, cotton. Okay. Well, yeah. I love Aurafil threads. I really do. 
because they have just such an array of colors. And so when I piece, I like to use Aurafil thread, but in an embroidery machine, even though this is not a very dense design, embroidery speeds are much faster and Aurafil cotton thread is not really designed for that kind of speed and it can cause a problem. And so if you are going to do this process, I recommend you'll have better luck with poly threads or a rayon, yeah. It's, I mean, it's completely up to you, but generally you don't embroider with cotton thread unless that thread yeah. is, yeah. It, if it I just, were to choose any cotton thread though to embroider with, it would be the Aurifil because of the mercerization process that it goes through. It's one, of, it has the least lint of any cotton thread on the market. So if you're a cotton fanatic, then just slow your machine down a little bit and go with that cotton. Yeah, thread. that would work. Sure. Yeah. Slow the machine down. That would be great. Yeah. So we got, uh, do we have another question? <clears throat> for? Two more. Is that, is that okay, Becky? Yeah. Are you spraying the fabric or the batting? Um, I generally spray the batting. I worry about getting a, a blob, you know, a wet blob on fabric. And I mean, even though it doesn't, but right. I spray the batting. Uh, top and bottom, and I'll I'll do it in quadrants or just you know just easy. But no, I do not spray the fabric. Yeah. So, last question from Paula: Do you stitch in the ditch to stabilize your quilt before you start embroidery? No, she uses that uh, the tape on the edge, right? The right. That we talked about OESD tape right. in the shop. I, I don't uh, generally because if you stitch in the ditch, I mean you can. But if you stitch in the ditch, it take, can take away from the embroidery design itself. So the, yeah. the idea of this is to be able to finish a project and have it look like you sent it to a long armor that did a pantograph on it. That's the idea. And cool. so you, you can do this. So, and one of the nice things too about these designs by Juju Designs is that the the size of the design, you choose that. It is scalable based on what you want. So if you have a, a very busy print, maybe you can use a larger scale design. If you have a not so busy, then you can use a smaller. And it's totally up to you how you want to do that. So when we get ready to do something like this, uh, I generally recommend start starting in the uh, on the side in the middle somewhere, and you can just take your template and uh, like you can print this off if you don't have any software. You can go to Embrilliance Express, which generally is used as a freebie. Embrilliance Express is free, and it is you, you can't save anything with it, but you can print. And so once you pull the design into Embrilliance Express, you hit print on your print and stick target paper and you're ready to go. So you can line up the crosshairs that print out on your project and put them right on like a seam line or something like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and line this up right underneath the previous pass that I did. And I'm going to let it start a little bit off. So, okay, we have a quick question from Lorraine. She says, do you generally start in the middle of your quilt or does that make a difference? I, I do because it gives it a little bit more random looking pattern. It doesn't look so, you don't want it to look lined up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, okay. So let me angle my camera just a little bit down so you can see a little bit better. So, if I want to do this size, let me look at how it would be. It looks like I can do one here and one here. Okay. It looks like I can get away with just four passes of this design. And the reason you have more fabric on the, on the other side, once, once it runs and goes to the other end, then you can just stop the machine when it's no longer going to pass onto the quilt top anymore. So pretty easy. I'm just going to take this and line it up right here. And we're going to be doing this today for um, like if you have a camera system, 
This you do not need a camera system in order to do this. And in, in the video, and um, if you go to my my blog, Power Tools with Thread on YouTube vlog <laughs> on YouTube, or you search edge to edge quilting on YouTube, it will come up. And it's like a pink cover, and you can see that. And it's the designs by Juju One, and I take you step by baby step how to do this process and explain it all to you. So, and I show the old fashioned way of using um, a regular hoop with a grid and how to make it work and how to align everything up. So, I think I'm about ready to hoop this. And I'm just going to grab my hoop. And you want to make sure that it's very loose so that you can get all three layers down in the hoop. Have, do you ever use the magnetic hoops, Becky? I do. Yeah. Matter of fact, let me grab that. Why didn't you oh, tell me? I didn't know you had that. So the Designs of Machine Embroidery magnetic hoops are amazing for the luminaire and the multi-needle machines. And everyone, what do you think of Becky's studio? Isn't it phenomenal? I th I'm just oogling over all of the beautiful things that she has in the background. <laughs> and Tammy says the magnetic hoop is a godsend for the SE 1900. Oh, you have the sashing frame. Very nice. No, no, I do not have a magnetic hoop for the multi-needle. Um, Barbara, I think you need to help me out with that. So I, I um, I've got this. <laughs> yeah, bring one to Houston so I don't have to pay shipping. Um, and yeah, I. So if you have a magnetic hoop, you definitely want to do that. So this hoop right here uh, is just phenomenal. I absolutely love it, and you can do all kinds of great things with this because once you. Um, get everything hooked on there, you can slide your project while it's still kind of uh, hung up on the magnets inside. And they're multi pieces that don't bite your fingers. And this is for the uh, brother machine and the baby lock too. I know you guys aren't a baby lock dealer, but I got baby lock girls in my audience. And so um, this will work and you can get this from all brands and it will work on your baby lock machine. So just so you know that, but they're identical and it works so, so well. And so if you have a multi-needle that has a vertical screen, this will fit your machine. So let's go and take a look at the machine now. Hey. All right, so while she's changing out her camera, I just wanted to let everybody know there's tons of different hoops available for the multi-needle machines and for your, if you have a single needle flatbed, uh, non-tubular arm machine. Um, so the Designs of Machine Embroidery dime snap hoops are really, really popular. The one that Becky Thompson is using is called the uh, sash frame, and that's available for multi-needle, uh, six and 10 needle multi-needle brother and baby lock machines. Um, and that allows you to, on the multi-needle, like slide the design, which is really, really neat. Um, there's uh, tons and tons of unique options, and maybe we'll see some new things coming out later this year, which at Houston, which will be super exciting as well. So, oh yeah, didn't you just get back from a show? So you know about some secret stuff. Oh, I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> So my goodness, do we have any questions, Callie, while she's setting up? Let's see. I think we've answered them all. Everybody just loves the sewing studio. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Everyone's loving your studio, Becky. And so what Becky's doing now is she's taking off the uh, the A frame um, so that she can attach the sash frame directly to the machine. I'm glad you're doing this because um, I have not shown how to do this on my channel <laughs> thanks for being flexible i just was assuming that you would yeah. use the magnetic frame i just i forgot i forgot i forgot um can you believe hey, that? I, I have an inspirational quote that spoke to me today um and it may um 
it may be good to say now, but um, there was one that said, um, choose love and never let fear turn you away from your playful, creative heart. And I was like, why not use that for sewing? So choose creativity and never let the fear of doing, messing something up or doing something, you know, everyone's fearful about oh. what could go wrong. Um, but don't let that get in the way of your creativity. So that really spoke to me today. And I, I don't know. That is so true because I cannot tell you the number of things that I have messed up. Oh, yeah. So you were on the side of your camera, just to let you know. <laughs> okay, okay. Perfect. Um, one of the things I like about this multi needle, too, is that it has a table that is just fabulous. And I like to put this on like this it kind of fits on here and when you're doing these end-to-end -end quilting designs it is nice to have this table that yeah it's in and what it does is it supports the weight of the quilt so you don't get that heavy drag uh, on the yeah, table. otherwise it tilts your hoop forward and it can alter your design. Like think of heavy towels, even quilts. And oh, you know what, Callie, that um, dime, um, uh, what was the, we did the video on it recently. The um, weightless quilter. The weightless quilter, everybody. Ooh, that's, that's also yes. awesome to use with I this as well. Somebody was talking about that earlier. Someone mentioned it. Kudos to you. Yep. Yeah, Brenda, go Brenda. <laughs> go Brenda. <laughs> Brenda Martin. Yeah, I love, love my weightless culture. Okay, so let's see how we're going to put, oh, I'm going to go the other way because it quilts from left to right. Now, if you're doing a very large design and you need to flip the quilt 180 degrees, if you write to Designs by Juju on their uh, help page, they have a contact section, they will send you the size that you need and um and, and they'll they'll do a reverse flip for it it's called reverse stitch order and they will send that to you for free but you just have to send them your order number so so these are the magnets they've got a couple of um pretty really strong magnets in here and i just start i i put my finger on the crosshair of the design and find the hole where you know uh Kind of over the needle plate to make sure I'm on it. See if I'm in the right place here. About like that. Okay. And then just take this and slide it and put it up. And these magnets are strong enough to go through all three layers of the quilt sandwich. Make sure we're good. This. I one on here. Oh, under there. There we go. Great. You've got different sizes. So I'm really glad I had a chance to show this today because I have not done a good tutorial with this uh, frame yet. So there. Okay. That, that looks great. That's going to hold just fine. And. I've got the design pulled up in here. Let me get, um, let me get you guys a little bit closer so you can see. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Let me just come here without letting this start to the motion. Okay. So, um, Becky, if you could um, speak into the microphone a little bit. The, the Is that better? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. There we okay. go. Okay. So the design is on here. Okay, um, Becky, we need you to move to the center again. Let's do it. Yeah. Test. Oh, there we go. Because you're losing me. Yeah, my, my, I need an external microphone. So. Perfect. Can you see the screen? Okay, good. So the design is on the screen and it is all ready to go. It looks uh, like it's going to be, let me see. I don't know that I have. Let's see. Yeah, I need to rotate this. I'm going to hit rotate 90. And I can tell I have my, I can tell I have my paper on upside down. 
Well, I, and I'm not even entirely sure. Let's see. See, you talk me up all this way and then come to find out I don't have it together at all. So I want to, well, that's not the right one. That's why. Put me backstage, Barbara. Okay. All right. So what she's using is the Designs of Machine Embroidery Dime Print and Stick. So if you're interested in that, you just print the design on the um, template and then you stick it down onto the fabric and then you can line it up with your either using your needle up and down feature on your machine or if you happen to have a camera like the Brother 10 needle or the Luminaire or the Stellaire machines, then you can use that as well. So Becky, give me a thumbs up whenever you're ready to come back in. All right, Callie, we have any <laughs> questions? Let's see. Oh, here we go. Okay, Ruth, what method do you use for spray basting your quilts? Do you begin in the middle and work out? I I think that um, if you're doing like a, a line, um, but definitely on a quilt, starting in the middle is good because you're going to uh, prevent shifting from like if you start at the top and then go all the way to the bottom, like sometimes, you know, um, it could shift. So just be careful for that. And let's bring in Becky. You ready, Becky? Oh, shucks. Oh, oh we lost her. Oh, no, she's here. <laughs> yeah, we got the thumbs up. I love okay, that. Um, cute thing in the background, too. Your tape measures. Very cute. Oh, that's a moda. <laughs> Okay, so I have uh, the, the correct pattern on here now. And I'm just going to touch the camera on the screen. And it tells me it's going to scan. And so I have the design up already. You can see it's pretty quick. And then all you have to do is, so now I can see the design in the screen that is going to be embroidered and I can see the print and stick target paper that's on the fabric. And I just have to move the design. Um, I'm gonna tell it okay, let's see. You can nudge it, there we go until it's over the design i'm gonna and you can do rotation of 90 10 degrees one degree or 0.1 degree and the idea is you just want to make sure that your start and stop positions are good to go oh okay so i'm just gonna hit okay and i'm gonna Pull this off. Now this one's going to stitch top to bottom, which is not a problem. You're gonna then you'll just then you'll just do the embroidery in vertical rows. It's that easy. It doesn't, you know, not an exact science, but it works great. I'm going to hit embroidery, and I'm going to tell it to. Oh, let me go back. And go, okay, I need to go to my spools and tell it number six because I want to use white. And make sure we're good to go under here. I'm using regular thread underneath and embroidery and lock and go. And it's just going to do its thing. So this is just a great way to be able to Okay, so since so while you're stitching out, um, we do have a few comments. Um, let's pick some uh, Callie to bring up. All right, so Ruth Gilmore, cute little design for your <laughs> image. I love that. Uh, I love that. And uh, yeah, so she says, when using the edge to edge quilting designs, have you used software for design placement? What would be the easiest method? She has a Bernina and software. So yeah, I do. I can use um, 
You can, I will do mine in Embrilliance, but you can use any embroidery software. It works fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have any more questions? We one more from Paul. Yeah, we, it helps if you, uh, it helps if you have a full bobbin. Oh yes. <laughs> May your bobbins always be full. There's another <laughs> quote for you. Yeah. Um, so someone asked, does it have a projector like the luminaire? No, it does not. But you do have the camera feature. Mm -hmm. And it will show you the design placement on the screen with the camera so you can place it on the screen. Uh, but currently the brother luminaire is the only uh, model with the projector on it. All right. Okay. We're up and running again. So do you want to see around the room a little bit? Let's have a tour. That sounds so exciting. <laughs> okay. Unplug you here. Okay. So this is my desk area. This is where I spend most of my day. And then over here is uh, there's my calendar where I schedule all of my sew alongs and whatnot, and that is my design wall. That is a 12 foot design wall by four. And here is my long arm. It's a King Quilter special edition. And it has a uh, robot on it right here. And you can see my lights for doing YouTube videos. Oh. Uh, isn't that so cute hey becky we're losing your sound just a little bit but i love okay, that i'll come back here that cow <laughs> so cute that is a panel from riley blake believe it or not that's crazy so and then my husband made the ruler racks the uh this one here is for regular quilting cutting rulers and then this one here are is for quilting rulers. And over here, I have a baby lock. I got that. That was a Craigslist find. And I have a, uh, I have a Sapporo 527 iron. And it, the water bottle is hidden up under here. Yeah. Okay. So actually, we sell the Sapporo on our website. Um, oh, good. So then put that down below. Yeah. 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 I love this thing. <laughs> I have had this iron for five years and it is not, let me show you right here. It is not pretty. It is not a pretty iron. Okay. It gets hot. It stays on all day, which I absolutely love. And it does this, uh, it has a solenoid right here on the side. Okay. So you get no water in your iron at all ever. And what, what it does is it turns the water to steam before it gets on your fabric. And so you never get any spitting on your fabric. I've had this iron for five years. And uh, matter of fact, I'm, maybe I bought it at the show from you. I can't remember. And then um, it, it has never failed me. It's just one of the best. And, and for what you spend on irons today is just obscene. And this is the best value for the money. Yeah. Everybody I know that has one just loves it. Becky, uh, okay. whenever, we go, whenever um, we go to repair machines and costume shops, that's what they have. Yes. Um, yeah. It, and all of the garment factories. It, it is. It's like a commercial garment iron. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have finished the stitch out here. I'm not making y'all sick moving this around. Not but yet. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments if y'all are still okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Everyone's so, saying that uh, they love your room. <laughs> what uh, it says? Why do they not make these for single needle embroidery machines? What do you? What do you not make? What? Okay, the, so currently that magnetic hoop is available for the Brother Luminaire and Baby Lock equivalent. That's the sash yes. and frame. I have one of these frames for my Luminaire. Yes, you, yeah. you can get one of those. And maybe just check back with us a little later. Um, we're, we're speaking to manufacturers, so maybe. I, I just love that thing because 
and don't get me wrong, I have dime magnetic hoops for my single needle machines, but they bite your fingers. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We do have one question. I'm sorry. Uh, Leanne asks, how do you manage the bulk of your baby blanket when using a single needle? Do you roll up one end when starting in the middle? Right. Yeah, you, you do. You have to roll it up. And I have a weightless quilter and I use that from Designs and Machine Embroidery. And I'll use that to hold up the weight of the quilt. Let me get that glare out of your, yeah. out of sight there. Okay, so the pattern finished. And then all you have to do is bring it back over. And I can show you here on the back. You can see. See the see the bubble pattern that it made? It turned Gorgeous. out just perfect. Yeah, it turned out just perfect. There is a way to, just like on the single needle, to bring up the bobbin thread if you're going to start that is not on the edge of the quilt. So, um, and you can do it in a multi-needle too. It's just not as intuitive and you can't have all these sticking together. So what you do now with the pattern, we'll see, is uh, you just find, you know, you would, there's the start right there. And I'm just going to match it up to where it finished before. And make sure that it's level with the seams in the quilt. And there it is. And then you just run the scanner over it again. You run the camera over it again, line it up on your screen and hit go and it will quilt it. This one would probably take me about, I don't know, 25 or 30 passes to get it all quilted all at one time. So That's so easy. So you, you chose a design that has an op open ends on both sides. You scan it. Uh, the background with the template on it and then you just line it up using the camera on yeah. the machine or if you don't have a camera function you'd probably have to use needle up and down I guess to well so what I do with like for instance my baby lock machine back here does not have a camera okay and so that is when you pull out your hoop with your grid and you line the crosshairs up of the printed because the crosshairs are printed on the target paper so you line up the grid on the target paper, hoop it so that the crosshairs in the center are in the spots that are correct on the grid. And then you make sure that when you put your hoop in the machine, you just hit the, you go to needle plus minus and you go plus one and it will jump over to the start point. And then you needle up down, grab your bobbin thread, you know, and you wanna pull this off of course, Grab your bobbin thread, let it start the lock, and then it'll, you know, clip your tails and it'll start going. So you don't have to have a fancy machine in order to do this, but you can see how easy it is to scan it in and then let it, uh, you know, rearrange it on the screen so you know it's right. Yeah, because um, I guess the angle of it makes a difference, too, if you're not, like, in the full scope of the right. hoop. So do you ever use, like, the snowman feature to line it up? Ever, you or? can. You absolutely can use the snowman feature. You sure can. But um, one of the things that I have just found easiest is uh, having that camera system to do this. So all of the designs are open on either end, either vertically or horizontally. And you know, and there are every little thing you could think of. There are hoops, uh, hearts. There are. Um, little trucks. There are, you know, just seashells and stars and teddy bears and you name it. And she is coming out with tons of different designs all the time. And it is just amazing. So she's getting ready to release a Halloween batch as well. So there's just a ton of, of designs out there. Tammy so. says elephants. And we did have someone commenting uh, much earlier in the program. They said, if you do, you have a specific design that's easier than the others, but I wouldn't think that one would be easier than the others. It's just about lining up the two endpoints um, right. and making sure. So they're all equally the same, uh, I guess. Yeah, easy. that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's pretty easy to do that. 
And, um, you know, the, the easier ones, I would say, will be the ones like these bubbles right here. This is a very simple one because if you have to turn the quilt around and do it upside down and you, you know, you, it just makes it so simple that if it's off just a little bit, you're not going to notice uh, on the front or the back of the quilt. But if you're going to do a design that is directional, like uh, the dinosaurs, for instance, then you have to have the heads going the right way and facing the right way and all of that. So that's just yeah. another thing to watch out for. Jay Davis brought um, up a really good point. Uh, and I do this, but do you do this? Do you bring your bobbin thread up to the top when starting each block? Yes, do I generally do. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't have to here because it started just off the quilt edge, the edge of the quilt top. But for every other one from then on, I would do that. And on the multi-needle, uh, what you have to do is pull the thread tail out of the little keeper bar in the back and get a little bit more of it and hold on to it and let it and do one stitch and pull up that bobbin thread and stop the machine, pull it up and then let it tie off, get it started, stop it, trim your tails and then let it finish. So... Let's see. Uh, Dagmar Riley has a baby lock Solaris and asked if she could just load the design into the machine with my phone. Yeah, yeah cause it has the app um, mm -hmm. to do the embroidery design. So yeah, sure. And you have on the Solaris and uh, Luminaire, which is the brother equivalent, um, you have the projector too. And you could project the design on the fabric yes. to make sure that it's lining up with that dime um what's it called again print and stick print and stick target paper yeah target now you can yeah. you can use regular printer paper you don't have to have the print and stick target paper it just stays put where you need it to as you get it hooped and get the hoop in the machine and all of that so it just you makes it print of, or you could use the same one if it's a re repeating design throughout the whole i I could use this one single thing 25 times throughout this whole quilt and it would be fine. It's, it, it doesn't lose its sticky. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it, they do a great job on this. That That is one of my favorite things. Doing it without the target paper is a little bit more difficult because, you know, you have to get it, but you have to print the template so you know where it's going to stitch. Yeah, that's the key. Oh my gosh, Becky, you are amazing. Oh, you You're really so are. Uh, okay, so Dang. Callie, we got another question. Yeah. Okay, so Jan Orr has a Bernina 750. Uh, she said, what do you do if you don't have the camera? I have the 750 and it doesn't, does not have the pinpoint placement either. So that's like, okay. um, they, that's Bernina's equivalent of the snowman feature for rotation. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so we so explained that. A little bit. Yeah, but maybe it's, it's pretty. It's pretty simple, right? So you would put your pattern, you know, your template on your quilt top, on the quilt sandwich, hoop everything, take it over to the machine, and you want to make sure that where you have it set, that your without doing anything at all, if you were to drop the needle, that it's going to hit right in the center of this crosshair. And then you want to, uh, I'm sure the Bernina has this feature where you can jump ahead one stitch or however many stitches you want to mm -hmm. jump to stitch number one. So let's say we're not starting on the edge. Let's say we're starting right here. Just, you know, now we're on the second pass. So then I would hit the plus one to jump ahead one stitch and it will jump all the way over here to the edge to where yeah. it's going to start. And that's where, if you're using a magnetic hoop, you can give a little tug and a little wiggle, but don't pop it out of the hoop and get that so that when that needle drops, it's going to drop right exactly where you want it at the end of the last stitch from the previous pass. I hope that makes sense. It's yeah. better to see it. In, matter of fact, if you watch the first video I did for Designs by Juju, I show exactly how to do that on a non-camera system uh, right near the end of the uh, of the video. And there are timestamps in the video so you can see that. So, so awesome. Okay, 
So Carol has a good point here. She stitches out the design on no show mesh. That's another great way to create your own templates. If you don't have software, you don't want to, you know, do the printer. You or can just printer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or a printer. Some people are printers. You know, or maybe your printer's on the fritz. You know, things happen like that. That's okay. And so you can do uh, just print it out on no show mesh and then trim it so that it's right. Uh, so that your your start and stop are right on the ends and on the edges, and then you can pin that or use some, um, you know, like some tape and tape it to the to your to your quilt top, and then hoop it and get it to work. And it, it works. It's it's so simple and it works great. Yeah, we so, had a question earlier on. Um, someone was asking if that Sapporo iron that you were showing in your tour is still available. And guys, we have that on our website. We have that Sapporo iron. We carry the dime um, weightless quilter. We carry the dime magnetic snap hoops. We have in our seven retail locations that um, sashing frame. So we'll be adding that to the shop page as we go along. We just kind of showed some really unique products. Um, so thank you, Becky, for that. Oh, okay. Got yeah, and these are things that I use in my sewing room. I'm in here eight to 10 hours a day. Since I started my YouTube channel, I actually retired from federal civilian service doing cybersecurity of all things and started doing this. And uh, they've even tried to get me to come back to work and I told them, no, thank you. But, <laughs> you know, these are things that I use all the time. And, and uh, a safety feature about that iron is that I hook it into a power strip that also has a overhead light plugged into that same power strip. And I only use the power strip to turn the iron on and off. And that way, if the light is on, then the iron is on. And that's how I don't leave it on overnight. Yeah. Because it's very easy to leave that on and not realize that it's on. Because it doesn't cycle through and make that like temperature click, click that you hear from like, other irons. It doesn't do that. And so, yeah, I love it. I love You're that so thing. Smart. Oh, um, before we get to this last thing that I want to talk about. Uh, oh, Francis has a question. If you're doing edge to edge for the first time. So this is a little different. This is a design from Designs by Juju. Um, what would you suggest to do as a good practice piece to get your confidence? She has a Dream Machine 2 and a Dime Magnetic Hoop. I would just say place just get mat started. A, yeah, placemats and a table runner. That's the easiest thing to do is to just do that, you know, or uh, it, Another thing you can do, so one of the reasons I said to put the uh, tape within a quarter of an inch of the edge of the quilt top is so that your binding is going to cover any residual tape that doesn't come out of your stitching. Or if you're doing like the flip and turn, you know, you've got the backing is large enough and you're just going to flip it over and make it the binding, then your binding is just going to come up and cover the edge of the quilt top. And it yeah. So everybody. Um, oh, this is our internet cutting out probably. Oh. Do we need an ID poll for the iron oh. in the meantime? <laughs> so I'm not sure if I'm cutting out or if she's cutting out, but if I'm still here with you guys, please be sure to like, comment, and share, or subscribe um, to be eligible to win that $100 allbrands.com e-gift card, uh, which we'll be announcing very, very soon. So Becky, you're back. Hey, Becky. Um, I was just letting everyone know we're about to announce the winner for the $100 allbrands.com e-gift card. Um, so everybody get your comments in, get your likes, get your shares and subscribes in uh, for, um, for all brands. But also if you haven't followed Power Tools with Thread with Becky Thompson, hop on over to her YouTube channel because she is a wealth of knowledge. She loves what she does and it's the passion shows through in her videos every time I see them. It's just amazing. But while we're waiting, I wanted to, that table behind you is so well thought out. And Keith made a hole in it for you. Like oh. you saw it in a crawfish foil. I thought that was oh. so funny. 
Speaking of Keith, I want to tell everybody, we have these on powertoolswiththreadstore.com. These are the seam rippers that my husband creates. They are made out of acrylic and they are great for arthritic hands. They're very, they're weighted and they feel so nice. I think everybody on here has one or two of them. I see a lot of familiar names, but they are lots of different colors and they're so cool. You have a seam ripper on one end and you can tuck it away when you're not using it. And the other end has a stiletto, which is great for making bags. And you just turn it and pop it in there. And now you're not getting your fingers under the so under the needle of the sewing machine. So this is really, uh, it's awesome. I use these all, I, I hate to say how much I use them. <laughs> right, so you're asking, about my cutting table. My husband custom made the cutting table for me that I am sitting at right now. And I'm gonna um, move oh, my- Sorry, I didn't know that was the one that you were at. I thought it was behind you. But um, no. for- <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, yeah, we're over an hour, is that okay? Uh, yeah, so we'll, um, yeah, that's fine. But we'll be okay. announcing very soon, the winner. I just got to show everybody this because I thought it was so smart okay. how so, Keith helped you out here. So you can see the whole thing. The top is 72 by uh, 75 by 36. And it has shelving down under here that has my irons on it. And then it has cubby holes underneath. And so you can see sides. It has a smooth level uh, top. Here where you can see this. So underneath that top, he yes. cut a hole that there's a trash can underneath and all of her little scraps, she just goes and they go into the trash can. So smart. So smart. There's the hole, and I just push all my scraps and go like this. Um, I love it. Thank you, Becky. Hey, Callie, let's pick a winner. So, drum roll, please, everyone. Someone's going to win a $100 allbrands.com e gift card, and it is. Chantel Pinto. Handy Hubbies Yay! are a blessing to us crafters. Yes, they are. Chantel, and congratulations. Woo! That's great. <laughs> so please email me at events at allbrands.com, your name, email address, and phone number to claim your prize. And I'll get that over to you. Congratulations. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And thank you, Becky. Thank you. I had such a great time, Barbara. You guys are so wonderful and so understanding for our little snags. So I can't wait to see you in Houston in October. Yay, me too. October 28th through the 31st. Register at quilts.com. Uh, we love you. Be creative. Don't be afraid to try new things and, and get quilting with your embroidery machine. It's so exciting. And don't forget about that 72 months on the 10 needle brother that starts on Monday. That's uh, yep. an amazing deal. This is, this is the time. Awesome. All right. All Thank right, you everyone. everybody from San Antonio who tuned in. Bye Carol. Bye Tammy. Bye Joe. Bye, we love you so much. Bye, <laughs>